Hi everyone, Sleepy Soul here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about two non-Chinese, non-Japanese, uh, Asian e-commerce plays, uh, and those are C Limited and Kupeng. Uh, C Limited is is Southeast Asia, uh, most notably Indonesia, and uh, uh, Kupeng is Korea. And in this video, we're going to recap, uh, follow up to the video we made in December about C which is right here on the screen. And then at the back half of the video, we'll talk about Kupang. We'll introduce you that, introduce that stock to this channel and talk about valuations of both uh, and where I see them going from here. Anyways, so C, uh, so for those of you that weren't aware, um, I did a video on C right before their de uh, uh, December, or right after their December earnings, or before their December earnings call, excuse me. And I basically said, November earnings call, excuse me. I said, it's down 90% off its highs. Uh, you know, it's making this double bottom. Uh, you know, is it, and it's kind of been in this uptrend. Is it worth going long? Um, I have a, I had a small position. Uh, anyways, the stock sold off and I'll explain why in a second. It then found this bottom at about $35 and then January turned up, uh, and got as high as uh, $65 this week, uh, before falling back, uh, to about 58 and change 58, 13 to be exact. Um, well, it fell last quarter, which was Q3's earnings, uh, because Girana, I think I'm pronouncing that right, and I couldn't pronounce it in my last video either, uh, Garnera, you can see that in the top left, uh, Gar, Garrina, uh, their, their quarterly active users uh, were declining, and bookings were, were slowing as well, uh, and the quarterly payout ratio was declining as well. And and this is still the issue with C Limited. Uh, this is the entirety of why it's trading at a discount. Now, why does that matter? Because if uh, if you look at the e-commerce section, right? So this is this is Shopee, uh, their their e-commerce. Uh, you know, gap revenues up uh, significantly. Uh, Gap marketplace revenue is up significantly, but adjusted EBITDA has just collapsed, right? And, um, you know, gross orders are up, uh, uh, GMV is up, uh, and then, you know, their financial sector, which is a very small portion of their business, is up, up, up. Uh, but meanwhile, the entirety of their free cash flow comes from their video game division, which is their digital entertainment, which is uh, Garneria. Uh, again, gap revenue is down. Uh, bookings up slightly, uh, but adjusted EBITDA is down, and then adjusted EBITDA says percentage booking is getting worse. Um, and the quarterly active users are also declining. Uh, quarterly paid users are also declining. So you're, you're left with this picture uh, for C, where you, you know the, there's been a lot of there's a lot of bulls that just chased this stock higher just now uh, in the last two weeks since they reported, uh, you know, about a month ago, or, or about two weeks, 10 days ago at this point. And these are the same bulls that were buying it, you know, at 50 the first time when it was up there and they were buying it in the 200s. You know, they don't, they might not pay too much attention to the stock uh, outside of the financial metrics because, hey, you know, their revenue is growing. It's growing at a anticipatory, anticipatory number of about 10% to 15% a year and free cash flow could theoretically come in potentially as close to $2 billion a share. But again, their free cash flow is only derived from their video game division. This is the entirety of their free cash flows, their digital entertainment, and this is going down. Um, again, gross profits are up year over year at 13%. Uh, you know, sales and marketing were up, and for the most part, everything else, uh, R&D was up, uh, and cost of revenue was up slightly, but mostly that was sales and marketing and R&D. Uh, G&A expenses were down significantly, which is great. Uh, and then again, this year, that was the first year they've ever had uh, a net profit. So that's what they were really crowning on on the conference call. But broadly speaking, this is a story of not e-commerce growth, and we'll talk about that in a second. But um, where is it? Uh, their video game division, because they also have $8 billion of cash, and they note that here. Uh, where is it? Uh, $8.5 billion of cash. And a lot of this growth is purely just just reinvestments of interest rate uh, carry that they're they're generating from this uh, and then again total adjusted EBITDA uh, for the most part uh, it has gone up significantly but quarter over or year over year on the same quarter was terrible so a lot of this growth has already happened 
Um, and, and that's one of the things that makes me worried about going long here at close to $60 a share. Uh, when I made that video prior, it was like $35, $40 a share. I think it was like 42 when I made that video. And I said, hey, this has the potential to double. You know, we're up 50% from that point, basically. Um, so, you, you know, we're at a totally different position in terms of where you stand uh, in, in, in multiples, where you stand in growth prospects, and where you stand in terms of, hey, we have another quarter of data. And again, this is the, the the video. I keep I know I keep talking about the video game division. The video game division is their uh, is their real um, free cash flow engine. This is the, where they're generating cash. So why are you buying this name over a ten cent, which is trading at ten times earnings? And uh, while it does have more exposure to China, obviously about 50% of their income comes from main, the mainland, uh, is is purely a low cost video game company uh, in terms of large margins uh, on on hit products versus you know uh, C seen declining growth. Now a lot of uh, pivoting to what the bull case is, a lot of people are going to talk about uh, the e-commerce division. They're going to say, hey, look at gross orders spiked, GMVs up like crazy, uh, you know. Gap marketplace revenue was up. Now, just even I was down year, year over year, but um, uh, Gap marketplace revenue was up. Look at how great the e-commerce section is. The problem with the e-commerce section is Shopify or not Shopify. TikTok is not currently allowed in Indonesia, which is one of their largest markets. I think it is the largest market for Shopee right now. Uh, it might be second largest after Thailand, but uh, it's it's first or second. And uh, because of that, there's not a lot of competition. Now, the moment that gets flipped back on, that's going to hurt one of the more profitable divisions of C. And these mar the, the revenue numbers are going to start shrinking and the margins are going to shrink because they're going to have to spend even more uh, in sales and marketing. So that's going to co make cost of revenue go up, margins go down. It makes their operating margins weaker uh, in the in the Bai, uh, or the Shopee, excuse me, Bai is the Japanese one, Shopee division. And it, and it leaves, again, push, pushes their digital entertainment more and more onto an island. Again, I want to be clear here. If you buy C at these levels, you are buying it because you think their, their digital entertainment, their video game division is going to start turning back up, whether it's quarterly active users stabilize and quarterly paying users spike, uh, bookings go up, uh, quarterly active users go up, and the pay ratio stays the same. Something's got to give here to make this, to, this inflect the upside. The other problem is, again, $8.5 billion of the market cap is in cash. Uh, that's uh, approximately one third of the company. So that's that's you could make an argument that's somewhat bullish. But the problem is they're only going to do about f um, uh, it's still trading at two times sales. So you're getting your your free cash flow engine is declining. There's potential there's potential for a major inflection with the uh, TikTok uh, shop uh, in Indonesia being allowed in at some point in 2024. Um, and that gets that gets you to the point where now it, there, that inflection is to the downside. I, it's kind of been in this. <coughs> if we flip over to the daily, you'll see the uptrend it's been in. Right. So that's been the uptrend since since it bottomed uh, back in August. It kind of went grinded higher. Uh, it broke below that and then fell back into it. And now seems to be grinding on the top part of that uptrend. Uh, I don't know how stable this uptrend is. I just kind of drew it. Um, on, my, on that last video. So, you know, the fact that we're back in it probably speaks in, in and it sold off at the top end probably speaks to the sense that, that there is some algorithm playing around in that. The bigger issue is this long-term downtrend it's been on since uh, January of 2022. Excuse me, January 2022. Uh, it, you know, it pushed down there in May uh, and it looks like we're bumping up against that here in um, uh, uh, here, here in, uh, February of 2024 or March of 2024. So, you know, one thing you could probably do is, is if you want to get long, this name is sell puts at the breakout level, which is $50 a share. You could probably sell them to May, June, June or July. Uh, you know, hopefully the shares price comes down 15% and you can go long this name at $50. I'd be very careful about chasing it up here. I just think there's better e-commerce plays across the world. Um, even stuff that I don't think is that good to buy, like Meli, uh, Mel, uh, Mel, uh, Mel Libre, I think it is. It's the Brazilian e-commerce play, which I'll do a video on sometime in the next two weeks. Um, 
or you know alternatively uh, Coupang, which we'll talk about in a few seconds, or the Japanese or Chinese versions of these of this company. I just think a lot of people there's a lot of growth investors. The reason C gets covered a lot is there's a lot of growth investors from way back up here who love that the stock goes up, 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 was going up, 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 and up. They couldn't, you couldn't. You could ask them; they they couldn't even tell you what the hell this stock did. I remember I specifically asked people, uh, you know, at three hundred and fifty ish dollars, I was like, "What the heck is this company, and what do they do?" And people would just be like, "I don't know," uh, but it goes up. And I was like, "Well, whatever it does, it, it you know, it, it it does it at a you know four hundred dollar level, and and you know." Earlier or uh, earlier this year, it, it whatever it did, it did at a forty dollar level. So you know, it's 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 one of those things like like the uh, the law the the got a screen for revenue and got a screen for twenty percent revenue growth and and just keep running that screen every every day. Like this might uh, be, they'll remember C from from those screens and it'll, they'll it'll, it'll always stay on their watch list. So they might bring it up more uh, and and that makes you know C a little bit more. Um, have a little larger con uh, uh, control of the public con investment con uh, consciousness because again it did it was a it is a fallen angel it you know it ha it did go up like crazy I want to be very clear I don't think this company is going bankrupt but with uh, I just think that again we're up 50 percent um, from you know where I made the video last time I still have a small position and then you know again. I don't think earnings were actually that good. Uh, I, you know, a lot of people are pointing to that it'll inflect in Q1, that free cash flow will go positive, and and that'll that'll start you know ri rising higher. I mean, they might be right. I'll be very clear. I, I do own a small position. I don't plan on selling that small position. Um, I, I will say the other big thing that makes me very worried is <clears throat> Kathy Woods is buying the stock, and um, while I'm not a big like Kathy Woods hater. Or like she's a terrible investment in, uh, individual. I actually think she's great at her job. I just think her job is to be the counterparty to some other big funds that seeded her to to kind of get retail to buy the other side of their trades. So you know she'll sell when the stock is actually bought. She sells at the bottom because people because whoever her seed investors are wants to buy uh, those stocks. So she's like, okay, here you can have my float. And it unloads the retail bags and gives that money from the retail uh, investors who are invested in Kathy Woods to the uh, uh, seed investors. I, I listen. I, I that's my conspiracy theory. Don't don't quote me. Don't me hold me to that. I, I I I'm not insinuating anything. I'm just saying that that's like that's my pet conspiracy theory based on how often she buys high and sells low on a lot of different names, whether it's Nvidia, uh, really outside of Tesla. You know, Nvidia, Unity. Uh, Twilio was one. Uh, uh, Path was another. Uh, she's finally started selling Teladoc. So, anyways, her buying C on this wick basically uh, makes me very nervous. Um, so, you know, I don't know if if that means uh, this is the top. I mean, again, she's buying a fake, a potential, a, a li what was likely a fake breakout because it was sell it sold off the entire that entire day. So. You know, she she was clearly buying the the fake breakout there. Now I don't know if it kind of grinds higher and then just shoots up, <coughs> or if it just you know falls back to the 52, bounces, 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 and then just makes a decision you know sometime later this year. Uh, but either way, I just don't want to be long. I don't want to be buying a name that Kathy Woods is buying. It just has never. It hasn't worked out for me when I when I even if I've believed in the stock, uh, and, and I've been burned too many times to to argue otherwise. <laughs> So be careful here. Be careful with C. Um, next, we're going to talk about Kuping. Um, so Kuping is uh, colloquially known as the Amazon of Korea. Um, they are the largest e-commerce company in Korea. Uh, Alibaba is the major competitor for them. Uh, eBay also has a pretty solid foothold in in Korea, but it's not it's not nearly that it's not that serious. It's just you know, and eBay is not doing fantastic. Now, I I, I do love this. They started the slide with like, hey, we've been diluting shares 1.3 percent. Okay, that's not good. But the total converse CAGR is 4 percent. At least this is uh this is the you know the TAM theory. So if you know you take 4 percent, you subtract by 1.3. If you just hold your shares and 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 Coupang maintains their market share. Uh, levels, you're going to see 2.3% return, or 2. Point, what? No, 3. Point, uh, no, 2.7. I had that right the first time. 2.7 returns uh, on your shares. 
not great, but hey, it's it's it, it, you know there's potential for upside um, on operating margins, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, again, just kind of an interesting um, an interesting uh, PowerPoint to have. Uh, spend per customer by cohort. So the, uh, you know the 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 years are uh, uh, you know how each year is going per customer base when they started. Oh. As you can see, people who started buying in year uh, 2018 went up at, again, there's no verticals here, so I don't know what the what the y-axis looks like. But, um, you know, it started, let's go up in a straight line. The ones that started buying in 2019 went slightly higher. Uh, 2020 and 2020, or 21 and 2022 are pretty much on the same path, but then 2023s are even higher. Uh, and 20, or sorry, 20 and 21s are pretty much on the same path. 22s are even higher and 23s are even higher than that. So, it, you know, net net, it means that as more and more people come onto the system, they're spending more money. Now that could be for a couple of reasons. And I think the most obvious one is inflation. Um, that's, that was not mentioned on the conference call, uh, nor was it mentioned on this PowerPoint, you know, again, the same item costs six, eight, 10% higher, uh, you know, from 2018 to 2023, you know, maybe if it's even 20% higher, okay, well, if I'm buying the same items that my mom bought, when she joined the platform, uh, or, or I'm buying the same items that I bought when I joined the platform, well, she's going to pay 25% more. So it's going to make my each cohort, my cohort look higher. So this is a little bit of a misconception, but it's still kind of moderately bullish. Active customers are up 16% year over year, very solid there. Uh, again, uh, they're, they're barely penetrating onto, uh, into, into Korea. So you know, there's potential for growth here. Um, while wow members are up uh, 27% year over year, uh, total revenues were up 20% on an FX neutral, uh, and then 23% year over year. Again, it's mostly in Korean, uh, uh, Korean one. Um, total net revenue accelerating growth rate, uh, you know, 20% is still pretty solid. You know, there's some FX, FL, FLC accounting changes, but really, even if you get 20% re uh, net revenue growth, that's still pretty solid. Uh, again, 18% year over year. Uh, and then this is the big one. Um, operating margins were 50% year, 57% year over year. So the big, so coupon trades at one time sales right now, that's again, comparatively to see at two times sales, um, Cooping is is mostly or almost entirely e-commerce. With basically, they have an Uber Eats uh, vertical. They have a video game vertical, which is very tiny. They have a uh, fintech vertical, which is again very tiny. But most of it is just the uh, is just the Amazon dot uh, com cooping dot com. And and they do remember the majority of Koreans live in major cities. So Cooping has the ability to get them packages in like hours, not, not, not even days. Like they can get them to them. I think in six hours or less for 90% of the items bought on it, but operating margins have been a big one because they've only been able to generate about 1% um, op margins on uh, each purchase, which is just terrible. Like you just, you can't survive making 1% on each purchase. It doesn't matter what kind of volume you're doing. So they've been able to move it out to 57%. That gets them to, you know, it's about 1.7% on their margins. Um, it makes the stock both work weirdly expensive and cheap at the same time because on op margins to market cap, the EV, uh, the enterprise value is like 27 billion and their operating margins are, um, oh, where is it? It's about 400 and, and uh, 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 it's, it's about, uh, f uh, 400, it's 473, uh, 3 million, right? So, or, uh, multiplied by four, I think if, if I'm not mistaken, it's like one point, yeah, they have right here, excuse me, 1.4, 4 billion. So it's 1.4 billion over 27. So you're looking at 25 times. Uh, but a lot of this is that tax, uh, reserve adjustment. If you, if you cut that out, it's basically 400 million over uh 27.5 billion which now looks a lot worse it looks uh it, it looks like about 60 times uh op margins to eat enterprise value so it's not a cheap stock if you look at it that way but again this is this is the bull case if you look at the operating leverage that they were able to increase uh 50 you were able to increase the leverage 57 percent year over year and i'll explain why i think this is going to continue growing in a, in a few minutes, you, you get a stock that, hey, if you could get three to 4% returns 
uh, uh, just 3% returns on each purchase. Uh, you're looking at a company trading at sub 20 times uh, that's growing at, you know, 4% uh, top line in terms of the TAM. They'll be able to start buying back stock. So the dilution won't, won't have an effect on it as much. And then next thing you know, you're getting a stock that's probably growing at 5 to 8% a year. Um, not to mention that as this, this market gets more and more penetrated, there's, uh, and, and their product, their product assortment, you know, I mentioned the Uber Eats, I mentioned the, the video game side, I mentioned the FinTech, you know, as that becomes a larger and larger component of their business, there's potential for even more income. Uh, so you're looking at some of this trading very inexpensively. Um, if they're able to get margins higher and just, they don't need to get it at 57% higher year over year, but they need to get this number up to two to 3% um, from the 1.7 it's at now, excuse me. Uh, so again, gross profits were 1.7 billion. Uh, and then um, uh, gross product, mar uh, gross profit margins were up to, to almost 26%, which is fantastic. That's 2% growth. Again, you want to see another two to 5% growth. Uh, you, you think about the operating margins just uh, um, on as gross margins increase. It's just, you're getting 2% more dollars for each dollar spent. And now you're, if you grow another year at 20% gross, uh, gross profit, you know, you're going to, um, uh, sorry, you grow revenue again. Apologies. It's early in the morning. Um, you grow total revenue again at 18%. And you're, if you're able to grow, grow this gross profit up to 27 or 28%, you're, you're just taking in more dollars and that leverage where you just get larger and larger in scale will just crush, 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 crush your earnings. You'll see the stock go from things close to it's like $18 right now. It'll be, it'll be a double from here. It'll be, you know, 36 to $40 a share. Um, Adjusted EBITDA. I don't really pay much attention to adjusted EBITDA, uh, just because again, it's it's an EBITDA is a, at the beginning is an adjustment. You're already removing, uh, you know, everything that actually costs you money. It's just earnings before, right? That's what EB stands for. So adjusting it some more is is always insane to me. Um, where is here it is. This is it. so the segment results. This is basically everything I mentioned: the Uber Eats portion, the fintech portion, the uh, the video game stuff. This is uh, their uh, revenues. Now their revenues have gone up 100% year over year. This is their growth engine outside of just the Amazon platform. So similarly to Amazon, they're trying to get a Amazon Music or Coupang Music and a Coupang you know, eats in a coupang, uh, uh, streaming site, right? Like they're trying to do all that to, to make their platform as ubiquitous as Amazon. Cause one, it makes their platform stronger, but two, more importantly, it theory helps the earnings. So they're, they're, they're developing offerings is, is there everything that isn't just the storefront? Um, this has gone up, uh, you know, hundred percent, uh, on both FX neutral and non FX neutral. So fantastic. And the more important thing is The more important thing is the, the EBITDA number as flatline. Now, again, this is an adjusted EBITDA number, um, and you would like to see the margins, the negative margins stay the same. So the negative margins getting larger isn't a, a great thing. It means they're losing money on each item that they're delivering. Uh, my guess is that's in the delivery food segment as that's the one that actually costs money every time you send it out. But if they can start turning this more positive. So it's instead of a loss, it turns to a gain. And then, you know, the nut revenues could, they don't need to keep growing at hundred percent, but if you can get this growing at 40 to 50% a year, again, it's a small base at $275 million. If you can keep growing this at 50% annually for the next five years, this is, this is a, you know, North of billion dollar, um, uh, uh, north of a billion dollar revenue generator. And if you can get these margins just back to, you know, flat, uh, you know, yeah, it makes the total margins look worse, but you're generating, you know, a billion dollars. You're keeping people on the platform and it's probably going to uh, filter back to the storefront. So it's kind of a tale of two, two companies when you go see, which is generating all their free cash flow from a declining business in their video game segment where coupang if they kind of removed this part of the business they would look a lot more profitable um but they wouldn't have that growth engine so they would be uh so c would look uh so by comparison coupang's numbers would look very inexpensive very cheap but it wouldn't have a lot of potential growth down the line like this is a segment that again uh we can add 
we can kind of price in in 2027 or 2028 a billion dollars of revenue from this. I mean, they're growing insanely. Like one more year of 100%, two more years of 100% growth, uh, they, which is will be 2026, they would be at north of, of $1 billion. I don't think they're going to get there that fast, but you could really, you can already see that, that it is accelerating up. So it would not surprise me to see them do half a billion on as a run rate from, let's say, mid uh, or Q, let's call it Q4 2025 to Q3 20, or 2024 to Q3 2025. So, you know, that that run rate is is, is basically going to double from here and they just need to get their margin number back to positive there. Um, and again, you see this uh, net, re net revenue in, in trailing 12 months. Uh, again, the, the, the margin story is the big issue. They need to get this, they need to turn this back to positive. Now, again, much like every growth story, you, you you run things at negative to get market share and to see that the offering's worthwhile, um, <clears throat> and uh, and uh, and and if and then once it is, you can start turning on the cost structure. So the idea is a lot of this is customer acquisition cost, you know, low end offerings to get people on board. But now that once they're using it, they'll pay more, and then they'll pay more, and and the margins start turning back up. So the real story is on the, it, for Coupang is paying attention to the developing offerings and making sure the margins flip more positively. Um, again, operating cash flow is really solid. Uh, it's trading at about 10 times, uh, trailing 12 month operating cash flow. Uh, again, not terrible. Free cash flow. Again, this is, you, you got to be careful when you look at this 1.8 billion, uh, when you remember that uh, they are dilute, they are net dilutive to shareholders. So some of this, uh, some of this free cash flow is stock based comp. So uh, you net it out, I think it's like 1.2 or 1.3 billion, which isn't inexpensive, which isn't bad. It's about a 5% free cash flow yield. Uh, I think it's actually four, four point something um, free cash flow yield uh, on a trailing 12 month basis, which, you know, again, for an e commerce play, that's a really exciting thing. I think it's only Amazon in the e commerce space has a, um, and the Chi and Chinese companies are the only two e commerce plays that have uh, better free cash flow yields than Couping. And then again, long term mar margin opportunity. Their goal is to get to 6.5 uh, and 10%. Uh, sorry, they're claiming they are at 6.5 this year, but to get to 10%. So they want to see uh, margins kind of double from here. And again, if margins double from here, it's trading at sub 20 times earnings. It's 5% free cash flow yield, but free cash flow yield to go up because margins will go up. Um, and then the developing offerings will, in theory, continue to grow. And that makes this company extremely, extremely cheap. I mean, we're talking like very, very inexpensive from a growth point of view. Again, most of the stuff I analyze on this channel just happens to be more in the value camp uh, based on the fact that growth boys have usually left it for dead. I mean, even the growth stocks like C, which I did last year, the Chinese stocks, uh, you know, Palo Alto Networks I did la a couple weeks ago. Data dog I did six months ago. These are all stocks that were were kind of destroyed. The growth narratives were temporarily destroyed is when we bought in. So this is kind of the opposite of that. This potential, ha if they could get this this margin acceleration growing, I mean, we're talking about a thirty to forty dollars stock here, at, and, and it's at eighteen dollars right now. So you're looking at fifty to seventy five percent upside um, if they can get these margin numbers. Uh, again, you know, there are some downsides to this. You're investing in Korea. Uh, Korea's got some uh, uh, location issues, being next to China, being next to uh, North Korea. There's potential issue issues there. Uh, you know, the Koreans have a declining uh, or perceived declining population, though that really won't have any effect uh, on this stock until 2029 or 2030 at the earliest, just because that declining population won't be a big issue uh, really for five to seven more years. Um, and, and again, that just probably slows the TAM. It might not slow Coupang. Uh, if Coupang is able to maintain their market share growth, um, you know, as I mentioned, Baba and eBay are the two biggest competitors here. So if if this, let's just say we, we, we get to 560 in ter, uh, 560 billion in terms of the total ca uh, commerce uh, TAM in Coupang, uh, I mean in China, and just stops. But if Coupang is able to, uh, to, to, to eat more share from Alibaba or eBay, this gets much more expensive uh, or much more valuable, excuse me. And you, you see that by the customer cohort, right? Like, like the, there's going to be growth in the TAM just from inflation alone. So, so that's the other thing. The other big risk is, is that, Hey, they just don't execute. Like the developing offerings just don't take off. And they're, uh, where is it here? Uh, 
the, the developing the development developing our offerings don't take off or the margins don't improve and this just becomes a massive drain i mean they just don't have the cash flows that like google has uh to to kind of have the quote unquote other bets just draw uh, just be natural drains on the company for 20 years or for 15 years and do absolutely nothing i mean you look at google they introduced when they switched their name to alphabet i think it was 20 14 or 15 so we're at uh we're about a decade from them and none of the other bots they did that because they wanted to make uh, make sure they were just known more than just google youtube and android uh since that period of time you know they've had google cloud and then nothing but google cloud didn't come from other bets that came from google so the other bet segments has been worthless so that's the that's the the bear case for coupang okay now looking at the share and looking at the stock itself um it's been pretty much range bound to, 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 uh, you can make, I, I put this, the, the, the down wick here in the January 22 number. Uh, uh, but you could probably put it closer to like here, probably just $20. Um, you know, they, they spiked there in March 22, uh, hit it bunch in, in November to December of 22, uh, it fell all the way to $12 after being below at nine. So you could probably make an uptrend like there, that's probably a decent uptrend to buy on. Um, and, and yes, I know the last two weekly candles have been kind of nasty, but I, I think this is a stock. If you could, if you could, you want to sell puts, you can sell puts at the $16 level to get long, or alternatively, if you want to buy long out of date, uh, on some weakness, like you want to buy some, uh, 25 or 26, 20 calls. I think this gets kind of interesting. Uh, it is a, you know, it, it is an expensive, uh, market cap to share price stock. What that means is, you know, it's a $30 billion uh, or $32 billion company. Again, 27%, uh, 27 uh, billion dollars enterprise value, but $32 billion market cap because there was some cash on the books uh, at $18. So, you know, for it to go to 60 billion, yeah, it's a double, but that's only a 35 ish dollar stock. So I, I say that because um, when you're, when you are doing anything with options, um, uh, you got to be careful on these these heavy these ex, these large market cap low expensive stocks because like that's a lot of money thirty billion dollars in the Korean market is a lot of money to move, um, and you know that's that's only a double from here okay now that doesn't mean it can't it can't happen uh, I'm just saying that you, you got to be careful uh, uh, with that now again I think broadly the market's going to be a little weak. Uh, pretty much to May. So this is a name to keep an eye on, right? You know, if, you, if it just kind of trades down to the 200 day as the 200 day kind of comes up, uh, meets at about the set, low 17s, it might get kind of interesting there if it could bounce off. Uh, you know, everything's kind of turning up. It's, it's obviously broke below the 21 day, but uh, everything's kind of turning up. But, you know, again, this is pretty much the range it's been in, right? It's been this $16 to $20 range. I know there's been a lot of heft below it, but uh, like, like down here, but you know, you don't need to worry too, too much about that. I, again, I think this uptrend is going to hold. It looks like, you know, again, I just threw that on there just now and it looks like it's, it's, that's been pretty good, a pretty good buy zone in the past. So I think until we get above 20, that's probably your buy area. So you want to target this area at the low 17s to go long. This is a, uh, Asian tech in general. And again, I've covered this in my Chinese videos. I'm still very long China, but Asian tech in general is the only tech I think is worth from a long-term risk reward period right now, uh, uh, near term. Now that might change in April and May. If we, if we see any kind of weakness in the queues, I've covered this in other videos, so I don't want to spend too much time here, but I think these are, I think specifically Coupang is one you probably want to buy on weakness. The other thing that helps Coupang is, uh, Druckenmiller has been long this name forever and he has no it clearly shows he has very little interest in selling Drucker Miller tends not to miss that often he doesn't like losing money uh so I think he's been long since I think since here uh so it'll be interesting to see if uh what he does there if this stock really does take off but this has been a disaster since the IPO in fact I this IPO was I think one of the worst uh worst IPO uh, uh managements by the um by the uh, IBs in a while. I, I mean, I, you can, you would have to pull up the like five minute, uh, um, but then also, 
I don't even know if we can do it. Like you, you, there was no green candles for like the first three days when this company came public. And while I understand that like the, the, the investment bankers real goal, I think it was, IP, I think it broke syndicate like 25, $26 like here. Um, I think the, like, while well, the, the uh, investment bankers goal is to make as much money for the IPO and for the company as, pro as possible. Uh, and I've always believed that. I just think that it was fundamentally mispriced. If the stock was going to double and then immediately sell off, uh, they needed to do something. I mean, they never, they didn't, they didn't greenhorn it, which they couldn't because it was uh, or green shoe it, excuse me, because it was too, it was above the IPO price. But there was just no support for this stock for basically four weeks. I mean, it literally, like you can see this in the thing, it's just red candle, red candle, red candle. It fell to $30 uh, two weeks after the IPO and it broke at 60. So it was down 50% from the IPO price. You just, you just don't see stuff like that. You didn't see stuff like that in 2021 when literally any other stock that IPO at this period of time was like instantly ripping higher instantly. Um, that was, this was, this IPO, like I think a month after the GameStop stuff and AMC stuff blew up the market in, in 2021. So uh, just kind of a weird, it was, it was a very weird IPO and it, you know, it kind of was a stay away for a while, but yeah, as you can see that blue line, I just kind of penciled in, you know, that was the low wick in January. And then again, it's on the month, this is the monthly chart. It's kind of shown flipping at that $17 mark, right? That's either found support or found resistance. And now it's above that. So it might, it might've found uh, that might be resistant or support again. So again, that's probably where you want to buy is the $17 mark. And, uh, and this is kind of an interesting thing to just tuck away in your growth portfolio uh, and, and just, you know, watch, watch and run. Uh, hopefully over the next few, few years, this goes, this does double. I, I really do think it's going to get there. So uh, again, I own a small piece. I'm probably going to add to it if it gets down to 17 again. Uh, but I, I, I think this is a much, uh, Coupang is a much more interesting company uh, right now. And it's for long-term than C limited, even if the share price of C limited might do better in the near term, uh, just because of the weakness in their digital entertainment division. Anyways, I've been Sleeping Soul. I hope you like this video. Please click the like and subscribe button down below and have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.